Hello everybody! Today it's time for another book haul. This year I am trying to haul every physical book that I acquire as part of my plan to hold myself more accountable to how many books I buy in a year. Already this has been enlightening and a little bit scary, but it does mean that I'll be doing book hauls more frequently this year, which I don't know some of you may care about that. So today I'm going to talk about the books that I've acquired in the second half of February and in March. I'm going to go through the first half of this book haul pretty quickly because they are all used books that I got from book swap sites. I was basically trying to use up a bunch of my credits before they expired and I used them all on backlist titles that I've been curious about but wasn't able to get from my local libraries. And quite a few of them I don't know that much about them, I just honestly wanted copies so that I could read them eventually. First up is The Big Over Easy by Jasper Ford. For years I was convinced that I'd already read this book, but when I actually looked it up, I didn't have it marked as read, so I really don't know. Somewhere along the line, I became familiar with the premise, which I think it's quite literally about nursery rhyme characters and the death of Humpty Dumpty. I don't know, it, it sounds very much like Jasper Ford. I have read the Thursday Next novels and a few other books that aren't from that series, but it's been quite a while since I've read anything by him. And frankly, you know what? I really miss his style, so I need to get back into his works. This will probably be the next thing that I read by him. The next two are both by Samuel R. Delaney, and they've been on my list to read by him for a long time. The first one is The Jewels of Aptor, and the second one is They Fly at Saron. Frankly, I don't know what either of these are about, but I think they're both fantasy, and I think that The Jewels of Aptor was Delaney's first novel published ever? Or maybe I have them switched, I really don't know. But now I have copies and I will read them eventually. Then I have a copy of Merchanter's Luck by C.J. Cherry, which I believe is the first book in some reading order of the Company Wars series. Basically, at the end of 2017, I was looking through Cherry's back catalog and I noticed that she had a ton of science fiction titles and in the Company War series that I never heard of and certainly never read. I've read Down Below Station from that series, I think, and maybe nothing else. So I keep meaning to read more by C.J. Cherry, so I ordered used copies of all of the books and this is the first one and yet the last one that I managed to get. So my plan is to sit down and read them all in order in one fell swoop sometime this year and I plan to go into them pretty blind, so I don't even know what it's about, sorry. Ilium by Dan Simmons. This is a book that I've intended to get around to for years. Back when I was reading the Hyperion Canto series by Simmons, a couple of people highly recommended this to me as something that I would probably really enjoy by him. I get the feeling that Simmons has written a variety of works across many genres, and I do think that his more science fictional works are probably for me rather than maybe his horror or fantasy. This one sounds like a blend of fantasy and science fiction. I won't read the description, but I will read the quote on the back which says, Simmons' tale of a far future group of humans, sentient robots, and pseudo-gods at war is a rarity. Timely, honest-to-god literature with a plot that moves like a runaway train. So a fast-paced story that combines fantasy and science fiction and Olympian gods, that sounds really great. Pushing Ice by Alistair Reynolds. This is another one that's recently been recommended to me when I was reading the Revelation Space Trilogy. It sounds like a lot of people really enjoy this one, so I grabbed a copy of it when I found one. I will read the description on the back of this because it's pretty short. Bella Lind and the crew of her nuclear-powered ship, the Rockhopper, push ice. They mine comets. But when Janus, one of Saturn's ice moons, inexplicably leaves its natural orbit and heads out of the solar system at high speed, Bella is ordered to shadow it for the few vital days before it falls forever out of reach. I don't know if this is set in the same world as the Revelation Space Trilogy, but if it is, I have my terrifying suspicions of what is going on with Janus. Aunt Dimity's Death by Nancy Atherton. This is the first story in a long-running cozy mystery series, and it was recommended to me by my friend Chris. So I went to the library to find it and discovered that my libraries have all the books except for the first one. I don't know why that happens, but it's very frequent and I just don't understand. 
I'm not gonna read the description of this on the back. I think it's sufficiently summed up with just the label cozy mystery at this point. When I'm next in the mood for a story like this, I will read it and I will tell you what I think of it then. Next is The Wood Wife by Terry Wendling. And this one I picked up for a very simple reason. It's been recommended by Ursula Vernon many times and Vernon is one of my favorite authors and one of my favorite people just personality wise. So I thought that based on the description of this, which kind of matches some of the things I've really loved from Vernon's work, that I might also really like it. I think this is a contemporary fantasy story set in the American Southwest, and that does sound quite interesting. For some reason, I'm getting Pat Murphy vibes from this. I could be completely wrong, but maybe it's the, the era of fantasy. The next thing I want to talk about was a gift, and that is a signed copy of The Wind's Twelve Quarters by Ursula Le Guin. Andrea found this and sent it to me, I think after she discovered that I didn't own anything signed by Le Guin after she passed away. Honestly, it had never even occurred to me to go try to find something signed by Le Guin when she was living. I never got a chance to see her at an event or meet her or anything, which is a deep regret I now have. Um, but anyway, I now have this because Andrea is absolutely wonderful to me. I very much appreciate it. I read this story collection many, many years ago when I was a child, and I intend to reread it. This copy I will probably put back in the plastic it came in and tuck it away somewhere safe because it's a very special object. Um, I have a an SF Masterworks edition of this collection as well, which I will probably actually reread. This is an old mass market paperback, of course, and I just don't want to like completely break it or anything as well. So. Thank you very much, Andrea. This is a very lovely gift. Next up, I got a couple of my pre-orders from Subterranean Press. If you've never heard of Subterranean, they're a publisher that does special collector's editions of science fiction and fantasy works. They're usually very limited run, signed, lettered editions of things. They're just really beautiful editions, very high quality, but it does mean that they're relatively pricey. So I try to be careful, but at the end of 2017, I pre-ordered four or five because I was just so excited. Um, so the first one here is Penrick's Fox by Lois McMaster Bujold. This is one of the Penrick and Desdemona novellas, which I am committed to collecting all of them in the matching hardcover editions now. They are very beautiful. The cover artwork is done by Lauren Saint-Onge, and I absolutely love her artwork. So I've talked about the novellas in the series multiple times, so I won't spend too much time on this one, but it's so good. And they've been putting out the hardcovers of these pretty quickly. They're going to be caught up with the e book versions pretty soon and yeah, so, so good. The second one that I got is one I haven't read yet, which is rare for me, but I just couldn't pass it up. And that is The Tea Master and the Detective by Aliette de Bodard. I believe that this is a detective style story in her Shuya universe. And I've really loved the stories I've read in that universe so far. And mainly this was beautiful and the first title that I think Subterranean has ever published by de Bodard and I wanted to throw some money at that. So it is beautiful. Beautiful. It's very shiny, so sorry for the obnoxious glare that gets in the way. Um, the artwork on the cover is by Maurizio Manzieri, which is a name that I recognize, but I'm not sure from where. So it's very beautiful on the outside, and I wanted to show you underneath the dust jacket as well. I don't think the Subterranean does like illustrated naked hardcovers or anything, but the the coverings on them, it, instead of a cardboard, it is uh, fabric, basically. It has that fabric texture. So this one is metallic. I don't know if this is like a brass color. In some light it looks gold, and some light it looks copper with like red tones to it. It's just luxurious feeling. And the end papers are a really lovely color. I don't know if you can see it, but it's basically a diamond pattern on it with like a texture. It's just it, it's luxurious, guys. <laughs> so this one, totally beautiful. I need to read it very soon. I'm sure I will really like it. This next one is Lumberjanes Volume 8, Stone Cold. This one is written by Shannon Waters and Kat Lee, and it's illustrated by Carrie Peach. I never know if I'm saying that right, but I'm going to go with it. <laughs> 
Um, you guys know I'm a huge fan of the Lumberjanes comic and I just keep reading them and I keep having fun with them. It's about a group of younger women at a summer camp where supernatural and fantastic things keep happening. It's just one fun, loud, colorful adventure after another and I keep reading them. <laughs> These next two I've already talked about in more detail in my first anticipated releases video of the year, so I'll just mention them briefly here. The first one is Monster Portraits by Sophia Samatar and Del Samatar. It's very short and it's very heavily illustrated inside, so it will be a quick read and I can't wait to dive into it. And the second one is Typescript of the Second Origin by Manuel de Pedrolo. This is translated by Sarah Martin and the foreword is by Kim Stanley Robinson, which intrigues me very much. Uh, if I remember correctly, this has an element of climate change science fiction in it, so another one I really can't wait to read. And I need to read more translated fiction this year. I've already fallen quite behind on my 10% goal for the year, so gotta fix that. The next thing is A Blink of the Screen Collected Shorter Fiction by Terry Pratchett. I thought I already owned a copy of this. Actually, I own a copy of the very similarly titled book, which is A Slip of the Keyboard Collected Nonfiction, which I haven't read. I bought it years ago and I don't know why I haven't read it yet. Um, but anyway, I've been rereading some of the Discworld novels this year and I plan to reread some of my favorite subseries. And while I was looking up those subseries, I noticed there are short stories set in Discworld. I've never heard of them, I've never read them, so I bought this collection so that I would have them on hand as I'm reading things in order. Um, there's also a whole half of this collection which isn't Discworld related, but I will read those stories eventually as well. And the last book for this haul is The Queens of Innes Lear by Tessa Grattan. I requested this for review from the publisher, Tor, uh, because I'm familiar with Tessa Grattan's name from the Tremontaine series from Serial Box. She is one of the writers for that. I don't believe this is her first novel or anything, but it's her most latest one. And this sounds like a fantasy retelling of King Lear, but from the perspective of the three warring daughters. So it's described as bloody, I think. <laughs> but anyway, I just thought it would be very interesting to read a fantasy retelling of a Shakespeare play. So hopefully I will get to this soon and have some thoughts on it. And that is it for this book haul. I would hold all the books up to show you again, but they just kind of fell over in a pile on the floor and I just don't want to deal with that right now. <laughs> so let me know if you've read any of these books and you think I should get to them sooner rather than later. And I will be back to talk to you again soon in my next video. And until then, bye.